Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so I figured I'd turn on the camera because I'm in a pretty good mood, and as I always do, preparing a meal, I'll have to wait for it, so I start the camera. It's becoming a theme lately. I don't know how that is, but nevertheless, um, yeah, I got some basketball on my mind. I, I, to, to a degree, I guess it's basketball related, but uh, I, I saw the, uh, the, the shop. That's what I'm trying to say. I want to make sure I get the name right, the shop. LeBron James was not present for this one, but they did have Kyrie Irving, Drew Barrymore, uh, Idris Elba, uh, a lacrosse player. I wasn't familiar with him, but he's a he's a big time lacrosse player. Uh, and they were just sitting down having a really, really dope conversation. And, uh, you know, I felt like LeBron James's energy would have been good, but I also understood why he just set that one out. Um not necessarily because of any energy that would have been funny between him and Kyrie, but because of the presence of others having funny energy about him and Kyrie. It, it would have put in, uh, an aura, so to speak, in the, in the air that I think would have kind of taken away from what ultimately came about within the conversation. Um, and, and I took from it some wonderful things, man. First of all, Drew Barrymore, legend, legend. I had no idea how profound she had become as a person. I actually remember seeing her. I can't say I met her, but I was in her presence, uh, believe it or not, at a laundromat doing laundry. <laughs> like literally at some little uh, hole in the wall, Hollywood laundry. Uh, God, what's the name of that street? I don't remember the name of the street, man. Franklin possibly or something like that. But it was one of those very very familiar places that I would go to a lot as a young kid with my mother and um, she just happened to be there one day so I think she spoke with my mom very briefly uh, but uh, but I was so young I hardly remember probably about my guess is probably about nine ten years old but you know she she had been through it quite a bit and um, she was in a very good place and you could just see what she was uh, saying at the end and then how she was uh, expressing herself was really powerful you know what I mean is what I took from it was just powerful and she was expressing a lot um, I encourage everybody to go check that out man I just thought it was a fantastic um, you know blend of different personalities uh, that came together to really just provide a lot of substance uh, in the content and that's something that I love to see so um, Obviously, the, the basketball aspect of it is it's the fact that Kyrie Irving was in the building. And, you know, nothing was brought up in regards to him reuniting with LeBron James. Not to my, re you know, recollection. I don't remember any conversation that kind of had them hinting at him joining, rejoining him or anything like that. But what you did see was him allude to having some things that he would have loved to have done differently. Uh, and just naturally having having grown, you know what I mean? And, and as I said in this camera, you know, having gone through the brunt of it already, you know what I mean? It's like it's one thing to, to take certain stances. It's another thing to take certain stances and see how it plays out. And that does something to you. You know, whether people who want to vilify you admit that or not, that process does take some toll on that person's personality and on how they operate from there on out now sometimes some people grow and get better others reject that and get even more so reinforced uh you know they, they more so reinforce whatever it was that was already there but uh that's rare usually there's going to be a change especially when it's within a young person making certain decisions that have to do with uh taking stances and and having a a belief that they understand what it is that they want to do and what it is that they're about because once you um reach a certain level in life you start realizing that you didn't even know who you were you didn't know enough about yourself to really take certain stances as confidently as you may as you did you don't you didn't know um, the environment and how the world works as well to know maybe it's best to kind of stay in line for certain reasons there's certain things you just pick up along the way but the confidence is there early and sometimes that confidence can lead you into some bad situations so I think Kyrie ran into that a little bit. I think a lot of us ran into that. And, you know, he was, he's, he's on the other end of it. Now it's like, okay, I'm in a redemption space uh, because people have vilified me. 
And I think that that's, that's kind of where he's at. I think he's ready to show the world that he's ready to play ball and, and kind of just, just be, you know, this version, the 31, 32, I'm not certain how old, year old version of him. And I, I'm excited about what he's ready to prove on the basketball floor. He alluded to himself as an artist, which is something I've talked about a lot. That's just how I view these guys, certain players. And I can't lie. I don't see everybody as an artist, and maybe that's just a flaw to my nature. But I do see certain guys, particularly very talented dudes, who create certain things on the fly, it seems to me. I look at them as artists. Um, And Kyrie's definitely one of those people who literally you will pattern things after. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he alluded to that and, and, and just how he overall views himself and and I thought that was very good you know I I feel like a lot of the stuff that he was talking about some of the things that I that I talk about like for example uh uh, there's something that I say in in a mantra that I say is it it, it has to do with uh shining and allowing others to shine along with you he kind of alluded to something like that wanting to to be in the presence of others while they're succeeding and either be a part of it or just kind of sit on the sideline and appreciate it and I think that that was parallel to something that I say, but it's also parallel to what one would think about when considering uh, the type of role he's going to be taking on going forward in the NBA, uh, allowing others to succeed next to him, allowing others to take the leading role. Uh, He spoke about uh, leaders, uh, and I don't want to mess up, but I always paraphrase, you guys know me for that, but uh, leaders need, uh, God, what was the way he put it? Leaders need assistance or leaders need uh, something of that nature, but the leaders are going to need a, a, a help or, or a wingman or someone to to be there to assist them with the burden. And he alluded to LeBron James having taken on so much back then. I think if he were to reunite with LeBron James, he would much more be ready for what the role would be in terms of really whatever it is that he's being asked to do. I don't think that 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 on the court he would have any limitations to what he would be willing to do for as in terms of a role and i think within reason obviously because you're not going to ask him to do something that's below what he can put you know bring to the table and i think the lakers have the role for that i think the nets also do as well for for what it's worth you know what i mean i think he'll be able to uh step aside and either play um robin as they love to say for katie or lebron james or wherever he needs to go. So I think that that was kind of him alluding to that a little bit. Um, so I, I thought he did a good job. I thought he put forth a good face. Um, and I thought that was necessary in terms of what he's trying to do. And I think the image of having LeBron James there may have actually hurt that to some degree just basically because of how people would have been looking at the situation, waiting for something. You know what I mean? Waiting for some type of shade, waiting for some type of dig or waiting for some type of uh tampering <laughs> is another thing so that's definitely another reason why i'm certain lebron james is not there um so i thought i thought it was great man i thought it was great um idris elba was fantastic as well i like seeing him and, and drew barrymore um bounce ideas off one another in terms of their field i thought that was fascinating um and so i just always say that i i do believe that lebron james um uh, does a good job and of course his team of course his team um you know maverick and and those guys and rich paul and everybody there they do a fantastic job of putting people together that's the gift that those guys have they just they know how to put certain people together and make people from different walks of life come together and have conversations and i think that that's that's a very special gift and i really really appreciate it in people um as I see it, you know what I mean? Especially people who can gather folks from different genres, different walks of life uh, that you've never heard of that otherwise wouldn't have conversations with one another. And you get to see them sit down and just appreciate one another in a setting that's comfortable, uh, in a setting that's welcoming. You know what I mean? It's just, it's well done. So I, I, I thought this was one of the better episodes I'd seen. And I don't think I've seen a bad episode yet. So bravo to Clutch and those guys and, and, and everybody who put that together. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to say in regards to that. You know, I thought that was fascinating because as I said, Kyrie's making himself visible, you know what I mean? And I thought there was, 
one of two ways he could play the situation based on their reputation. Either he could uh, kind of just let his game speak for itself and not really let his face be out there, or he could kind of let his face be out there, show that where his growth is at, show his personality, and let people get used to who he is. I think, and this is something that I really, really believe. I think different is different because different stays away. Different ain't different if different is present. It's no longer different. People get used to you. So the differences within you, it's like, oh, now we got this version of person. Now we, we understand you now. And that no longer is so different. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's different at first, but you got to allow yourself to be out there and be seen and be present with people. And I think that's what he was alluding to, you know, and, 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 and kind of just a little bit in terms of just kind of being present and, and kind of working its way back in there with people, you know what I mean? And just be around and, and kind of, you know, work his way in and not, I guess, be introverted as he was as, as an earlier person. You know, he said as a young child, he was, he's called himself a nerd and, you know, that kind of thing. And, and I get it. You know what I mean? A lot of times you see the world differently and you just know that you don't necessarily fit in. But as you grow, you realize that more people will take to the uniqueness of your personality than you allow yourself to see. As a young person, you get older, you can become more comfortable in your skin. You realize more people are more comfortable with you than you ever realized. You know, and the differences in the unique uh, per, uh, personality traits that you may have, you may realize that people deal with different types of people all the time. And you're just another type of different that everybody ends up running into. So, you know, I think that's what it's about, man. Um, <clears throat> here's here's my take on, on Kyrie's personality. I feel like a lot of the things that I meditate on in prayer and in, in my mind, he wears on his sleeve and he speaks those things aloud. It's like in the presence of red conversation, it's like everybody's just bouncing conversation, talking to whatever. He's like speaking the meditative uh, things aloud. And it's like, you got to get used to that. You know what I mean? For people who are just not used to that frequency, it's like they don't understand it. You know, another thing that I thought was really dope and just paying attention to the differences in people getting completely off of this conversation, but segueing into different content that did the same thing for me was uh, Joe Budden in the Adam 22 conversation. I sat down and watched a good majority of it. Still got about 20 minutes left to watch. But the one disconnect that I think that I've realized is that in watching that Joe Budden doesn't quite understand why Adam 22 won't turn off the professionalism as it pertains to when he acts, interacts with these people who are going through traumatic situations. He wants him to somewhat turn on a certain level of uh, humanity as he sees it, a certain a moral compass. But what I'm starting to understand is people have different moral compasses, but they come to the same conclusion. They just come to it a different way. His mindset, Adam 22's, he doesn't have that deep emotional you know what I mean? I'm not going to call the man a sociopath because that's too, that's not what I understand. But what I can say is, in comparison to an empathetic person who has so much deep emotional feeling, he may come off as a sociopath because of how he approaches empathy or what would be considered lack thereof. It's different versions and variations of that. But because people don't really understand but what's in themselves, they can't possibly at times, depending on their personality, fathom why another person's level would be acceptable though it's so further down than theirs but when you understand that they reach the same place i was listening to adam 22 and he was saying the passion that i have for getting the people what it is that they need is ultimately what is within my compassion that is his compassion it's the fact that he dedicates his entire 24 7 to providing the content that he provides to the people does he, does he benefit from it yes it's a, it's a business. It's supposed to be beneficial. And and he reinvests a lot of that money back into the business, just like most businesses do, as all businesses are supposed to, to continue to provide the content. He brought up a good point. Why is it that people look at people such as him, media people, to ignore monetary circumstances, you know, business, when it comes to moments such as passing away and, and things of that nature that are horrible, that they are responsible for reporting, but for some reason during these circumstances are not responsible uh, for, for, for maintaining the operations department of it in terms of taking in the profit and then being able to reinforce that profit 
into more production. It's like people are supposed to, they're supposed to manifest that, that, that profit to, prov- to production during these moments of, of grief. And yet people still want quality. So it's like at some point in time, it's like, all right, you want him to dedicate his life to what it is that he does so that you can have the best of it. But you want him to turn it off at certain points when it's convenient for your morality. However, people's morality is hard to fathom because everybody has different levels of morality and they don't understand one another. So at what point does he say, "Okay, I can't appeal to this person's morality? And mind you this, another thing that that I started to understand was Joe Budden and Adam 22 have different audiences. Joe Budden's uh, audience appeals to a certain level of empathy. Adam 22's audience has a different understanding of what these circumstances mean in terms of empathy. So as Adam 22 is in character, he's explaining to Joe Button, like, look, even though I'm talking to your audience, my audience is watching me over here. So I can't kind of fall in line with what you're saying all the way because I still have to stay who I am for the people who are watching me. And I think that disconnect was there as well to a degree. Um... You know, it's almost like it's, what I would what I would try to say to Joe Budden if I was in the situation is Adam 22's understanding of how to be empathetic is entirely different. His scale, what it means, but to those he's pointing it toward, they get it in a lot of situations, and that's what he was trying to explain to you, like the the the. For the world he's in, he's he's positioned properly as who he needs to be. And that's what I'm starting to understand about people. It's like, okay, I can't fathom what it is your position is. I don't understand what your position is. But for what it is that you're dealing with and for what's coming at you in the world, it probably is logical a lot of the time. If I'm to assume you're okay mentally, then maybe there's some context I'm missing. Maybe there's something I don't understand about where you're at that will make you come to the conclusion you are. And so if we can start understanding those type of things, I think we'll be able to communicate better just in general. But anyway, all in all, I just felt like a lot was taken from that situation. Adam 22 um, and, and, and Joe Budden, I think, you know, there's still more for me to learn, obviously, with 30 minutes left to watch. So hopefully they came to a different understanding in the end uh, on camera. Of course, they're cool behind the scenes, but to tie it in at the end to make it all make sense, I think... When I look at people like Adam 22, I look at, at, at media outlets, I just understand that they provide a a service to the people that are interested in what it is that they do. And a lot of people, a lot of groups, they have different ways of looking at things, different ways of coping with difficult situations, difficult, different scales of what difficult decisions actually are or difficult things to behold actually are, different uh, empathy scales. Uh, levels of what it is they'll tolerate. You know, I'm watching the world celebrate so very much this 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 father killed this unarmed kid who knocked on his door and was trying to bang open his door. It's like, yeah, I, I think he did the right thing shooting the kid, but there's something morally off with the way the, um, that, that I'm seeing people react to. It's like we're celebrating the fact this 19-year-old kid, 18-year-old kid lost his life just because he was trying to kick down a door. Like, yes, this man needs to protect his family. Yes. Yes, this is all very, very sad, though, right? Like, it is sad, right? And I just think that's where we're at. So, as I said, different is necessary. (laughs) Different. This is why I think different is necessary. Different is good because there needs to be an understanding uh, amongst people as it pertains to there are differences in moral compasses, but not everybody is just downright awful. Not everybody is looking to monetize um, pain just because they are uh, in a position to provide service and by way of doing so, it will make it look as if they're trying to do so or, or are doing so. It's like, yes, they're doing that, but no, that's, that's not the spirit behind what it is that they're doing. Now, if we need to change the practice, you know what I mean? If, if we're going to look at Adam 22 and say, okay, you need to be a trailblazer for changing the game, then that's a whole nother story. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, you're the first one, Adam. You, we want you to stop doing what everybody else is doing and start doing it the moral correct way. Okay, then that's one thing. But, you know, 
I mean, is he supposed to stand out front? You know, why why not somebody else? So I, that's that's what he really comes down to. I don't think he's doing nothing that everybody else isn't doing. Uh, I think, and I, I'm not. This is not an independent thought. I've heard others say this, but I think it makes sense. I think this is the conversation Joe would have preferred to have with Vlad, but because of his circumstance with Vlad, it's just not possible right now. Uh, so I get it. I guess. I mean, I don't know the situation, but I, I'd imagine if there's a problem, there ain't gonna be no talking. But. Um, you know, I just felt like a lot of that stuff was pointed at, at the wrong person, if I'm just going to be honest about my opinion. Uh, I think Adam-22 played the role, though. And if I'm going to be honest about that, I think Adam-22 was ready to take on that, those conversations. I think he, those questions, I don't think he was ready beforehand necessarily to take on the brunt of what that energy is. Because he knows what it is. It's people who want to hold him accountable for something um, that a lot of other people have done but i think that tells me that he possibly wants to change some of the things that's going on around him because if you if you're ready to say okay i'm ready to either take responsibility for something or approach those who want me to take responsibility for something that means you're ready to shift out of what it is you've been doing to some degree or at least <laughs> at least put a a, a a a wall of understanding between you and whatever it is that energy is uh, which would ultimately, by nature, change the environment around you. So I think that's kind of what's going on with Adam-22. Um, just my gut telling me, yeah, he's ready to make some changes. Uh, so, yeah, man. Content, man. Content always drives me to have conversations. I hope it's relevant to all of you guys because I do think that all of these people have really interesting personalities and they look at the world a certain way. And I do believe that both bits of content provided a lot of substance. Uh, whether you're a sports fan for sure uh, or if just somebody who's interested in this type of stuff I think there's a lot of good to take from both of those things so that's what I wanted to say man I, I should have made separate videos for these things but you know when I'm considering what I've looked at all day those are pretty much the only two things I really focused on besides my art so yeah I, I was happy that those were the things I watched because they provided uh, quite a bit of inspiration for that art so that's what I wanted to say man oh and for the record, Kyrie and Idris Elba, you know, they were having a conversation about Idris Elba playing Michael Jordan. And Kyrie kind of laughed, and I think I don't, I think it was a uh, Maverick kind of instigated the situation, say, "Ah, you smirked or something like that." It was something like that. But here's the deal: Do I think Idris Elba could play Michael Jordan? Yes, fifty-year-old Michael Jordan, cigar Michael Jordan. You know, leather boots, jeans with in the club, Michael Jordan. That's the Michael Jordan he's playing, not not playing days Michael. If you if, if he's playing playing days Michael, of course not. But old Michael? Older Michael with the cigar in his mouth? Yeah, man. Come on. Of course he could play uh, post basketball Mike. Of course he could play post basketball Mike. You know what I mean? It's, it's just making sure you have the right casting for the other areas of his life, which will obviously have to be younger people. That's it. But, but you know, I didn't think it was crazy at all. Not at all. Especially since I know he can get rid of his, uh, his accent at will. Like, I mean, that's not ever been a problem for him. So, yeah, he can be Mike. Easy. Easy. Idris, Idris Elba could des definitely be old Mike. Yes. Easy. It's just young Mike. That's just, <laughs> of course not, man. Come on now. He ain't going to be young Mike, bro. No. But anyway, that's what I got to say about that situation. I, I, was, I wasn't laughing at it because I literally went straight to Mike in the chair, holding the iPad, laughing at Gary Payton. I'm like, yeah, you, you just Elba could definitely play that. You could play that. And then what you do is have him flashing back to young Mike from that chair. And he just elbow always in the chair, sitting there holding the thing and then reminiscing on real Mike. And Mike gets played by somebody else. That's that's kind of how I see that going. So, yeah, man. Definitely, definitely dope content there. So, anyway, that's what I had to say, man. BDL44. Thank you all for watching.